Welcome to Log and to Learn Podcasts, North Lanarkshire Library's Learning Takeaway. This series of podcasts will help you to revise for Module 1 of your ECDL course, the European Computer Driving Licence. And don't forget, if at any time you want to know more, you can always visit our website at www.logintolearn.com. This podcast will provide you with information on computer viruses, including what they are and ways you can avoid them. A computer virus is a piece of malicious software code introduced to a computer system with the ability to spread itself to other computers. This should not be confused with the term bug, which describes an error or fault in a piece of software code. The extent of the harm caused by viruses varies enormously. In many cases, the contamination remains unnoticed in its host file until a specific event triggers off its action. Viruses can cause many levels of harm to a computer system. The least harmful might cause slightly odd things to happen to a file, for example if a user typed text into a word process document on an infected computer, certain letters or words might appear on screen in an unexpected text form. Another manifestation of a relatively harmless virus could be the refusal of an application software to save files to any area other than a specific folder on the hard disk drive, rather than the desired folder on a disk in the floppy drive. The action that a virus carries out when activated is known as the payload. At the other end of the scale, a virus might lie dormant until the built-in clock within a PC reaches a certain time on a certain date, or possibly until the computer has been restarted a certain number of times, and then become active. This type of virus is variously known as a time bomb or logic bomb. It could then destroy the entire file structure as laid down on the hard disk drive and render the drive completely useless. If this type of virus infected a network, the effect could be catastrophic. Microviruses are those that are added to executable files within an application. The most common of these can occur within the template files in Microsoft Word and Excel. This is why a user is sometimes given the option of opening such a file with macros disabled. If the macro facility can't run, neither can any virus that might be within it. A worm is a type of virus that does not affect files, but replicates itself within a system so many times that it simply clogs up the system resources. A Trojan horse virus is so called because it is disguised as a file that a user would be particularly tempted to open, for example a game or a graphics file. Currently the most common type of virus is one that arrives in an email attachment, installs itself within the recipient's Outlook or Contacts address book and automatically emails itself to some or all of the email addresses it finds there. These viruses are particularly effective since the recipient may not realise that the virus has arrived or they have spread the infection onwards. The new victims are less likely to be suspicious of attachments emailed to them by a known contact. Viruses can only become active within a system if they are introduced to the system from outside and then subsequently activated. It therefore follows that the only pathways available to viruses are via input devices such as floppy disks, CDs or DVDs or the internet. If genuine application software from reputable sources only is installed on a PC, in theory there should be no danger. 
If, however, disks containing applications or files are borrowed or acquired from dubious or unknown sources, the chance of them containing viruses is much greater. As indicated, emails received with file attachments are now a prime source of viruses and should be treated with particular caution, as should any files downloaded from the World Wide Web that have a .exe extension. This extension identifies executable files, that is, files that are actual programs, that will open up and run. If the file contains a virus, the virus will run with the program. Antivirus measures Taking certain basic safety precautions will reduce the chances of infection. Install reliable antivirus software and update it regularly. Use the software to carry out regular scans of the entire system. Use the software to scan any removable disk that is placed in a drive on the system before installing or opening any files from it. Be conscious about the source of any software you use. Save any files downloaded from the internet either to a floppy disk or to the hard disk drive and scan them with antivirus software before opening them. Be particularly suspicious of any email messages containing attachments from an unknown source. Even be suspicious of any email messages from known sources. Do not open anything suspicious. Virus scan everything. Antivirus software. Every computer system in use should have an antivirus program installed. It is important to be aware of the limitations of antivirus software. Virus writers modify existing viruses and create new examples almost every day. This means that the writers of antivirus software must modify their own software on almost a daily basis in order to maintain the effectiveness of their products. Once a user has installed an antivirus program, it should be updated immediately since it will have been sitting in stock for a number of weeks. Updating is typically done via the internet. The software will have some type of interface that will allow the user to specify how and when updating takes place. At the specified time, the software will access the internet, check for current update files, download them if appropriate, and automatically install the new data files. This procedure should be carried out on at least a weekly basis to ensure that effective antivirus protection is maintained. An antivirus program purchased and installed 18 months previously and never updated is virtually useless. Once an antivirus program has been installed, configured and updated, it must be used conscientiously, that is, used regularly to scan the entire contents of the computer and set up to automatically scan any incoming emails and internet downloads. If an antivirus program detects the presence of a virus during a scan, one of two courses of action should be followed. The file containing the virus should be disinfected. This means that the elements of malicious programming within the file are identified and deleted, leaving the file in its original harmless state. An effective antivirus program will give the user the option of allowing it to do this. If an antivirus program detects a virus that it does not recognise, that is, a virus that has been created too recently for the antivirus updates to disinfect, the software should offer to quarantine the infected file. This means that the antivirus software will move the infected file into a protected folder within its own installation. From this quarantine area, 
the entire file can either be uploaded to the antivirus software supplier's website for their attention, or simply deleted by the user so that it presents no further threat. If, in spite of taking all the recommended precautions, a system does become infected, the appropriate staff member should be informed, the computer affected should be removed from any network connection, and disinfected in the manner described above. If this is not effective, specialist IT support should be sought. Thank you for listening to our podcast. For other podcasts to help you to complete the European Computer Driving Licence and more information on our services, go to our website at www.logintolearn.com or call our free phone help number at 0800 953 1010.